my students, I am Talika Banerjee. Today I bring you the next learning episode on an important unit of the paper titled fingerprints, that is light sources used in fingerprint detection. In this lecture, you will be introduced to light sources used in fingerprint detection. In addition to it, you will also be studying about fingerprint enhancement by optical techniques and specialized light sources. You will also be acquainted with application of lasers to fingerprint detection. At last, you will get to know about the post treatment of developed fingerprints with luminescent materials and post treatment of developed fingerprints with reagents that form luminescent reaction products. We will wind up this lecture with a conclusion. So, dear students, let us start our today's lecture with a brief look at what we will be learning today. In spite of the scientific developments done in the field of DNA profiling, fingerprints remains the best and crucial form of evidence needed for personal identification in the arena of crime scene investigations. Fingerprint detection has improved significantly over the last 20 years due to concerted efforts by a number of research groups around the world. A wide range of optical, physical and chemical techniques are available for the detection and enhancement of latent finger marks. The best results are generally obtained if a logical sequence of techniques is applied. Also, in case of fingerprints, the application of various techniques or chemical reagents may increase the number of latent prints detected thereby improving their quality and finally enhancing them. However, it is imperative that each process is applied in a systematic predetermined order as the incorrect choice or the application of one method can preclude the later use of another technique or lessen its effectiveness. During the procedure of the latent prints detection, the employing of optical techniques and procedures should be heavily emphasized as these are non-destructive in nature and considerably improves the results obtained by physical or chemical methods. The choice for the best detection techniques invariably depends on the circumstances from where the latent prints have been recovered and thus depends on a variety of factors. For example, the type of surface on which the latent print is present, that is, whether it is porous, non-porous, smooth or rough surface. Occurrence of any specific contaminant, for example, blood, the probable age of the fingerprints. And lastly, the environmental factors, example, weather or not the surface is or has been wet. Also, Laser detection of latent fingerprints is an extremely sensitive technique with a wide range of applicability. The methodology is based on the principle that a luminescent fingerprint impinged on a non-luminescent surface produces laser excited fluorescence. The fluorescence so produced provides intrinsically such high sensitivity that fingerprints may be detected even on difficult and unusual surfaces. The method also ensures detection of weak as well as old latent fingerprints. Laser technique is often used as a supplement to conventional procedures of fingerprint detection. The simple observation of an object under white light may disclose a visible finger mark that can be recorded without any further treatment. On the other hand, more complex optical detection methods may reveal otherwise invisible prints that may not be developed by other techniques. A fingerprint detection sequence should always start with optical technique. In addition, prints developed using a physical or chemical process can generally be further enhanced using an appropriate optical method depending on the characteristics of the treated marks, example, color or luminescence. The value of fingerprint luminescence has become well understood since it was first studied in the late 1970s. 
Although the property of luminescence is not seen in cases of latent fingerprints, a variety of procedures and techniques applied in the correct sequence will result in the generation of luminescent prints. The heavy emphasis on luminescence is due to the much higher sensitivity that can be achieved when compared to conventional processes that result in a colored print. The application of luminescence techniques requires the use of high intensity light sources. While large and expensive laboratory based lasers were proposed in the early 1980s for this work, there are now a number of versatile cost effective alternatives such as filtered arc lamps. Today, for the purpose of fingerprint detection and enhancement, polylight is being used. This light source is portable and provides a range of high intensity light bands from the ultraviolet through to the near infrared. In addition, each band can be fine tuned through the tilting of high quality interference filters built into the system. This function has now been duplicated in other light sources on the market. Alternatives to the polylight include the specs, the quasar, the ductilite and portable lasers such as the scene sweeper. Lasers are restrictive in that they only operate at a limited number of wavelengths. As we already know that there are three main types of fingerprint evidence that may be present at a crime scene. The first is the indented or molded finger mark which is a three dimensional fingertip impression in a malleable substance such as putty or candle wax. Such impressions can generally be enhanced using oblique light. The second type is the visible finger mark which may be positive or negative depending on whether the fingers were contaminated with the colored material such as blood or whether the colored material such as dust or soot has been removed from the surface by the fingerprint ridges. Enhancement of such marks can often be achieved optically depending on the properties of the contaminant in question. Blood is a special case where specific optical and chemical enhancement procedures exit out. The third type which is the most common and the poses a real dilemma is the latent fingerprints. Latent fingerprints are not visible by the naked eye and hence usually requires some type of physical or chemical treatments and enhancements so that they can be easily detected and visualized. These latent prints are formed from the complex mixtures of natural secretions secreted by the sebaceous glands and also from the contaminants from the environment. Knowledge of the major constituents of this deposit is essential for effective fingerprint detection. Consideration of how these constituents are affected by different environmental conditions is also important. The detection of latent finger marks is actually quite a challenging analytical problem. What is required is the detection of very small quantities of specific chemical compounds. In general terms, the fingerprint powders are the least sensitive of the available techniques with 500 to 1000 nanograms of material required in the latent mark for successful detection. By employing the usage of chemicals for example linhydrin and such that the color can be imparted to the latent prints generally 100 to 200 nanograms of the material is required. On the other hand luminescence detection using a chemical reagent such as DFO is sensitive down to the 1 to 10 nanograms range also. The latent fingerprints deposited on the various surfaces behave differently on different types of substrate. Also in addition to this the various techniques employed for detection purposes are effective only on some surfaces but not on others. As a result the surface type is a major consideration when selecting a sequence of fingerprint detection techniques for a particular set of circumstances. The most common device used for the detection of latent fingerprints on difficult surfaces is the argon laser. The surface impinged with a finger mark is illuminated with a blue green beam from the argon laser. Before it strikes the surface, 
the beam is made to pass through a lens. This serves two purposes. Firstly, it enlarges the area of coverage of the beam, so that the whole fingerprint impression becomes exposed to the laser light. And secondly, the expanded beam protects the surface from burning. The imprint is observed through a safety filter. Such filters absorb the short wavelength components and transmit the longer ones, thus protecting the observer's eyes. After the fingerprint is identified, it is photographed through the same filter. The identification of the fingerprint as well as its photography is carried out in a dark room. In order that light from the fingerprint ridges alone reaches the eye, the surface containing the impression should be non-fluorescent in nature. If the surface itself is luminescent, then the rich pattern is post treated with a chemical reagent so as to generate the ridge fluorescence which is either stronger than the background or of a different color. Alternatively, the surface fluorescence may be blocked by using an appropriate filter. The use of lasers for fingerprint detection dates back to 1977, when it was reported that inherent luminescence of sweat deposit may be illuminated by an argon laser. No fingerprint treatment reagent was used in this investigation. The fact that fingerprint residue contains luminescers such as riboflavin and pyridoxin was considered as a possible route to fingerprint detection. However, the luminescent components in the sweat deposit are present in trace amounts and therefore, the method had limited utility. It thus became evident that laser technique can be used for resolution of rich pattern only after the latent imprint is given a post treatment. Two broad post treatment procedures may be used. The latent fingerprint may be treated with the luminescent material. The latent fingerprint may be treated with the chemical reagent which reacts with the sweat component to form a luminous reaction product. In this procedure students, the finger impression is treated with a laser active substance which becomes physically absorbed on the sweat residue. When illuminated with laser light, the ridge pattern produces a contrast vis a vis the background. In first as the powder method, the application of finely divided material and the subsequent removal of the excess powder by brushing, blowing or tapping has been the universal method of intensifying fingerprints on non-absorbent surfaces since the early days of fingerprint technology. The technique relies on the mechanical adherence of fingerprint powder to the moisture component of the skin rich deposit. Conventional fingerprint powders consist of a resinous polymer for adhesion and a colorant for contrast. The adhesive gets adsorbed on the moisture component of the sweat residue while the colorant gets adsorbed on the adhesive. In this manner the rich pattern is visualized. The commonly used adhesives are starch, kaolene, rosine and silica gel. The colorant may be an inorganic salt like manganese dioxide or an organic derivative like eosin blue. A good number of powder formulations contain organic derivatives that fluoresce or phosphoresces upon exposure to laser light. Such compositions are useful for visualization of latent prints deposited on multicolored surfaces that would present a contrast problem if developed with conventional powders. Moreover, they can be used for developing weak prints also. Some common organic compounds which have been used for preparing luminescent powders are acrid and orange, the structures of which has been shown on your screen. Then we have acrid and yellow, crystal violet, fluorescence and the rhodamine B. Luminescent powders containing lanthanide complexes instead of organic derivatives have also been formulated. Lanthanide complexes offer several advantages including benefits from large stokes shift, long luminescence lifetimes, narrow emissions, ability of sequential assembly of complexes and chemical variability of ligands. Moreover, 
Such powders are suitable for detection of latent fingerprints on difficult surfaces such as wood, masking tape and polythene. The second technique is that of cyanoacrylate method. The principle underlying the cyanoacrylate method also called as super glue fuming or super glue technique depends on the fact that when alkyl to cyanoacrylate reagent is allowed to vaporize it undergoes polymerization. The polymerized ester has a tendency to get adsorbed on the sweat residue imparting a white color to the ridge pattern. The mechanism leading to the polymerization has been depicted in this figure on your screen. A china dish containing a few drops of cyanoacrylate and sodium hydroxide solution is placed in a fuming cupboard or in a fuming chamber. The object bearing the latent prints is suspended from the roof of the cabinet. The item is exposed to cyanoacrylate vapors for about two hours until whitish colored fingerprint pattern develops. Even though cyanoacrylate fuming is a convenient and reliable method for detecting fingerprints, the developed imprints are white in color and therefore lack contrast. The contrast may be enhanced by post-treating the cyanoacrylate developed fingerprints with a solution of a luminescent dye. Such as stains flores upon exposure to laser light, revealing sharp fingerprints. When dye solutions alone are used for print processing, the results are not satisfactory. The reason being that the dye solution tends to wash off the sweat residue. However, when stains are used in conjunction with cyanoacrylate fuming, this problem is avoided. The cyanoacrylate polymer stabilizes the latent prints so that solution dye staining does not wash it away. Crystal violet, the structure of which has been shown on your screen, improves the contrast of weak prints developed on polythene by cyanoacrylate method. The stain gets selectively absorbed on the polymerized cyanoacrylate. Likewise, the rhodamine 6G whose structure has been shown here, treated print also get preferentially adhered to the polycyanoacrylate deposition and hence are suitable for laser examination. Moreover, the absorption spectrum of the stain matches with the blue-green illumination of argon laser. The amino acids present in sweat deposition may be transformed into luminescent derivatives by treatment with a chemical reagent. The luminescent compounds, when examined under laser, reveal the rich pattern of the fingerprints. So here first we have the ninhydrin method. The ninhydrin technique has traditionally been the most popular one for processing latent fingerprints on porous absorbent surfaces like paper, cardboard and wood. The method relies on the reaction of ninhydrin which has been shown on your screen with amino acids of fingerprint residue. The reaction produces a purple colored compound called Rehman's purple whose structure has been depicted on your screen and which becomes deposited along the ridge making the prints visible. A 0.2 to 1.5% solution of ninhydrin in freon 113 is sprayed on the exhibit from a distance of about 6 inches. After the solvent evaporates, the solution is re-sprayed. The surface is then heated to about 80 degrees centigrade without allowing it to come in contact with the heat source. Better results are obtained by steaming the article for optimum development of fingerprints occurs at a relative humidity of 65 to 80 percent. The amino acids in the sweat residue neither interact with cellulose content of paper or wood nor do they migrate within the capillaries of the substrate. Therefore, the ninhydrin method makes it possible to develop fingerprints that are many years old. However, since the concentration of amino acids in perspiration is usually quite low, the developed prints normally do not show a sharp contrast. In order to improve the working performance of ninhydrin reagent, the developed prints are post-treated with group 12 metal salts. This interaction converts the non-fluorescent Rohman's purple into a photoluminescent complex. 
and which has been shown on your screen. The fingerprints developed by ninhydrin zinc chloride method becomes highly fluorescent under argon laser light. The 480 nanometers line of argon laser is appropriate for excitation of the orange zinc Rohmann's purple complex that absorbs at 485 nanometers and emits at 560 nanometers as shown in the figure. As a result, a pronounced improvement in their detectability is observed. Moreover, with zinc chloride post treatment and argon laser examination, the ninhydrin method may be extended to the detection of latent fingerprints on non-porous surfaces like glass and stainless steel. The complexes formed by the combination of Rehman's purple with europium and terbium salts to have been found suitable for fingerprint development, particularly on fluorescent surface. These complexes show enhancement of lanthanide luminescence via intramolecular energy transfer. Moreover, the lifetime of the luminescence is much longer than that of the usual background fluorescence. The lanthanide complexes are therefore suitable for time-resolved luminescence imaging. The second one is the fluoroschemine method. Like ninhydrin, the fluoroschemine reagent whose structure has been depicted here too reacts with the amino acid content of sweat residue producing luminescent reaction products which render visibility to finger marks. A solution of 20 milligrams of fluoroschemine and 0.4 ml triethyl amine in 100 ml acetone is sprayed on the surface containing the finger mark. The surface is dried and observed under the argon laser. Experience has shown that fluoroschemine not only possesses a greater sensitivity than anhydrin but also works well for the detection of latent fingerprints on multicolored surfaces. Fingerprint detection has improved significantly over the last 20 years due to concerted efforts by a number of research groups around the world. A wide range of optical, physical and chemical techniques are available for the detection and enhancement of latent finger marks. The best results are generally obtained if a logical sequence of techniques is applied. Today for the purpose of fingerprint detection and enhancement, polylight is being used. This light source is portable and provides a range of high intensity light bands from the ultraviolet to the near infrared region. Lasers are also being used for the detection of latent finger marks. Dear students, our today's topic that is light sources used in fingerprint detection has come to an end. I hope you all have understood the underlying concepts of this chapter. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in the series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQs, quizzes, LORs, etc. Make sure you revise the modules frequently so that you master the topic well and take up the exercises. Thank you for your time today. Do review the complete chapter as and when needed. Till we meet next, goodbye.